In this unit, we will explore solutions to the simple harmonic oscillator ODEs constructed using forward and backward Euler. Recall that the state variables of this system are the position x and the velocity v of the mass, and that solutions to the differential equation that models this physics are circles in the state space, sines and cosines in the time domain, and that the derivative vector is tangent to the circle passing through each point. Now, forward Euler figures out where the solution is going to go by walking along the slope. What will it generate if you start it from this point? Because the tangent vector is outside the circle, it will move outside the circle. Then, it will move, move along the tangent vector to a circle that passes through that point. And a tangent vector to the circle at that point is going to be outside that circle. So you can see what happens if you continue this. It's going to draw an outward spiral. So forward Euler's solution to the simple harmonic oscillator equations is not a circle, but an outward spiral. How do you think the time step will affect the shape of that solution? Well, since the time step is how far you walk out along that gray vector, the further you walk out along that gray vector, the more you're going to be outside the circle and the more you're going to be wrong. So the time step is actually going to exacerbate the speed with which the spiral goes out as it gets bigger. So for a small time step, the spiral will be pretty tightly wrapped, and for bigger time steps, it will spiral out more quickly. What about backward Euler? It does more work, certainly. It looks ahead on the landscape. It takes that test step, kind of sticks its foot out and feels around the landscape, and uses the slope out there to move forward from where it started. So let's see what backward Euler will generate. Remember, the first thing that backward Euler does is it takes a forward Euler step. Then it evaluates the derivative out there, which is a vector tangent to a circle that is outside the circle where the initial point is. Then it picks up that green slope vector and puts it down back at the original initial condition and walks along that. This is a little hard to see from my drawing, but the green vector is tangent to the outside circle, and therefore it points inside the inside circle. And that means the backward Euler is going to generate a trajectory that spirals in. Again, the time step affects this. If you have a great big time step, it will spiral in faster. And if you have a small time step, it will spiral in more slowly. It's actually generally true of single point ODE solvers like these. In the limit of the time step going to zero, all of those equations approach the first theorem of calculus, that is the definition of a derivative. You can't do that in practice, by the way, and not just because it would be an infinite amount of work, because the steps would be infinitesimal. Computers use finite precision arithmetic, like a calculator uses a finite number of digits. So they mess up when they are doing calculations with very small numbers. That notion will come back as well. This simple pair of examples should make it clear to you that numerical ODE solvers do not always produce accurate solutions, and that the accuracy of their solutions is affected by solver parameters, like the time step. But the issue is actually deeper than that. Think back to what friction did to the simple harmonic oscillator trajectories. It caused the oscillations to damp out. In the state space, here's what that looks like. This looks a lot like what backward Euler did to the simple harmonic oscillator. In fact, you can actually prove that it's exactly the same, not just that it looks a lot like it. In other words, forward Euler and backward Euler introduced what's called numerical damping. This damping was positive in the case of backward Euler, just like regular damping or friction, and negative in the case of forward Euler. Negative damping is a funny kind of friction. When the wind is in your face, it makes you go faster, not slower. So this whole business is actually really scary. Recall that you have to use an ODE solver to solve chaotic differential equations. Your laboratory instrument is introducing spurious effects into the solutions, features that should not be there. And those effects are indistinguishable from the kinds of real physical effects that turn up in these kinds of systems. A good metaphor for this would be as if the Hubble Space Telescope turned quasars into nebulae. Your observing instrument is altering the dynamics of your system in a way that mimics some things that you could see in real systems. Now, forward Euler and backward Euler don't get used in practice, but they are very useful for understanding and visualizing how ODE solvers work and how they break. In the next couple of units, we'll talk about the ODE solvers that people use in practice.